Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cheat Code Jiu Jitsu. Jeff here again. Uh, told you guys last week we we're going to be moving on to some half guard stuff. So today marks the beginning of our new half guard series that we're going to do. I have plans to do a whole lot of stuff to show a number of different positions. The thing that I want to focus on for the first part here is the lockdown, which is one of the most important half guard things that I play. I tend to use a lot of different styles of half guard now, depending on what I'm going for. Play a lot of knee shield slash Z guard, traditional half guard, a number of different types of things. But the lockdown is the first thing that I started working. It's one of my favorite styles of half guard. And it's one of the most important to know no gi because it offers you a significant amount of control over your opponent, over his posture and your ability to grip fight. So I'm going to be doing a series eventually on passing. And a lot of my passing is focused on avoiding the lockdown, keeping him from being able to get me in the lockdown in the first place or breaking out of the lockdown so I have a better opportunity to pass. No better way to understand why to do that than to show what the options are available from lockdown so you can sharpen up your lockdown game itself and then also understand conceptually why it is that you don't want to be there when you're on top. So we'll work some entries, some concepts, things like that today, and then we're going to move on in some of our subsequent videos and show the sweeps and some of the other options that are available, so stay tuned. So in order to begin our lockdown series, you got to understand what the lockdown is in the first place, as well as understand how to get into it so that we know what we're looking at. Some of you more experienced guys may already know the lockdown. For those of you who don't understand what it is, a somewhat traditional half guard, the way you normally play it is I would insert this leg in between chads and this tends to be up and then I'm locking around from the outside and my foot stays on the outside. That's good, there's some options from there, but especially when we're not playing D, I, I have so much less friction on my legs with his legs that it becomes more difficult to hold on to. So I'd rather have a tighter lock on his leg if I really want to get him in place. So here's basically what lockdown is without doing any of the advanced stuff. I'm in half guard, I've got one leg inside, I'm trapping one of Chad's legs. My outside leg is going to go across his leg, across his calf, and then I'm gonna weave this foot underneath of my inside leg. My inside leg is then going to tuck my toes underneath of his ankle, and then I'm just going to kind of extend it out. He's got a lot of weight on his knee right now, so he's not moving, but ideally I want him kind of back there. So that's the lockdown. It offers me some advantages because I've got both of my legs really, really super tight in this. And you can see how Chad's already kind of leaning forward when I push his knee back. Uh, we'll discuss in a minute some concepts over the control. But if you really want to learn how to tie the lockdown, this movement that we're doing right here, you can't do that enough. If you do it 100,000 times, you're still not even close to doing it enough. Because if you really want to get into lockdown, that foot movement and that foot placement, it just has to be second nature. So one of the drills that I always teach my students to get into it is just lay down, have your opponent stay on top of you and not really move, and then not even worrying about your hands, just tie it. Just take your outside leg over, tuck it under, tuck, and then extend, and then release. Tie it again, extend, release. Do that over and over and over again so that you can just understand how to make that foot placement work. And then when you're done doing that, you switch to the other side, do 10 more reps, 20 more reps, whatever. Just get used to that action, that motion of tying the lockdown up so that you understand how to get there in the first place. So why do I want to use lockdown? What are the advantages that this offers me as opposed to possibly another style of half guard that I play? So traditional half guard, this is good. This is okay. I've got some controls here, but I don't really have a great control over Chad's knee in terms of his ability to push it away, pull it in, and I can't really grab him and pull him in. You see how far we are apart from each other. I could potentially sit up and then I can start grabbing my underhooks or overhooks and clench and try to pull him down, but the guard itself 
doesn't really give me a whole lot of control over that. Same thing with, I'll go on the other side, say more of a knee shield type guard, Z guard. I love this guard, and there's tons of cool things that I can do from here, but this is a distance management guard in terms of keeping Chad away from me. He's not gonna crush through this leg. He's gonna have to do something to clear this leg out of the way before he's gonna be able to come in. If my goal is I want him down on top of me, crushing him and clenching him, I can't do it from Z. Butter half, that's another one that I like to use. This is good, but this is really more of a sweeping guard that I'm looking for. Bring him in tight and clenching, not quite as available. The posture control, that I get from the lockdown is really, really solid. So staying with this leg here, if I'm weaving and I'm locking this in on Chad, right now he's got weight on top of his knee. If I stay down here and then all I do is just simply extend. You can see how it breaks his posture down just sort of naturally. When his knee goes flying back like that, he can't stay postured up. So if this is, let's say, MMA, for example, Chad's gonna wanna posture, right? Mixed martial arts, he's gonna wanna start dropping down bombs. If I tie the lockdown, I extend him out, he doesn't get that posture anymore, it's gone. If I wanna clinch with him, if I wanna grab my underhooks, I wanna grab my overhooks, keep them tight for me, because for whatever reason, my game is gonna be down here. Having that lockdown in place really limits his ability to posture up and get away from me. The other advantage, or another advantage I should say, that I really like about it is lockdown is crazy difficult to pass if you are going up against somebody who really understands how to properly use it. From here, this traditional half guard that I've got, Chad's got options to pass my guard. He can get around. It's harder for me to really exert good control over him from here. Once I weave this in and I start locking him down, Anything that he wants to do, if he wants to do some kind of a guard pass, he's going to have to get that foot out of there and free himself from this lockdown first before he's going to get anywhere. I've got too much control over his leg at this point. So that's another really good advantage it offers me. There's also some submission defense that I can do from here. Uh, there's a few submissions that Chad's got as the guy on top. Probably the three most common that I see people go after me with when they're on top of me in half guard, especially when I've got locked down, is either a Kimura, and he's a Nogi Ezekiel choke, uh, or some kind of like an arm triangle choke. Any of those submissions require my opponent to come up high on me. Right? I can counter those by the use of my lockdown by using that to pull him back down. So if Chad sets up, for example, an arm triangle choke, okay? The more Chad, because you guys obviously all watched my arm triangle deep dive, right? right if you didn't there's a link in the description go back and check it out but in order for him to finish this arm triangle he's got to keep coming up my body and you can hear as soon as he gets that shoulder in here tight i'm already talking funny it's not good for me if i've got him in lockdown i can grip this up and pull him down my body and you can see the space that just opened up there with my neck unlikely that he's going to finish this same thing with a Kimura, same thing with a Nogi Ezekiel choke. You gotta be up the body. I can use my lockdown to pull the guy down. Now, word warning that I have definitely figured out over the years, being a short guy myself, if you're a really short guy on the bottom and you got a really tall guy on top of you, don't just rely on your lockdown to get out of those submissions because I still, to this day, get Kimura by people who are way taller than me in that position. Just keep that in mind. All right, so now let's talk about some concepts for holding and retaining the lockdown and how to apply it to make it work really well. So when I get in here in the lockdown, one of the, one of the first things that I try to talk to people about is foot placement. So I commented that I want to have this foot over his leg and underneath of mine, and then I'm tying in here. So let's just go ahead and have Chad come down here so I can get a little more control. There's two main different places where I'm going to place this leg. I'm either gonna go more or less over the top, kind of right back here behind the knee, in the pit of the knee, and then lock more of a figure four when I go here. Or sometimes, depending on what I wanna do, I might actually lock it down here 
closer to the bottom of his calf by the Achilles, and then I'm locking sort of a tighter little X down here. What I'm going to do is gonna be dependent on what kind of energy I'm getting from Chad in terms of how I think he's gonna be trying to go. There's a number of passes that people can do from half guard that require them to get this knee up in the middle. And then I, at that point, I would basically be sliding down to some sort of a quarter guard or something like that. If I feel that Chad is giving me a lot of upward energy with his knee, that that's the way that he's trying to pass, that's the time when I'm going to take this and put this in the pit of his knee and lock it there because now this pressure that I have driving down into the back of his knee is going to give me extra power and basically give him a lot of extra weight that he's going to have to lift to get that knee up out of there. Okay, so that's going to become very difficult for him. On the other hand, there's a series of passes that I'll do, which you'll see in more detail when we get to that section in the next part, where Chad can get his foot out of here by doing sort of a hamstring curl to bring his heel back to his butt and then kick his foot out to the side to free it from my lockdown. I, I'd ra I've got options for when he does that, but I'd rather not do it, do it at all. So if I feel like this knee is staying down, then I'm going to slide down a little bit, lock up a little bit more around his Achilles, and now I'm putting more pressure down here in the back part of his foot, which makes it more difficult for him to lift up. So by varying that pressure and kind of going back and forth periodically, depending on what I feel from him, it lets me hold this position a lot better. The other thing that I'm doing with my legs is I'm constantly pinching my knees together to apply pressure to him. And then I'm varying that pressure depending on what I need to do at any given time. If my main goal is I want to get in here and I want to grab Chad and pull him down and lock him in place. The whole time that I'm doing this, I'm pinching my knees together hard and I'm putting as much pressure as I possibly can on this lockdown. There's going to be points that I'll get to eventually when we move over to the other side. Where, for example... He's got me flat on my back and I want to get up on my side. I need to rotate around his leg. If I'm clamped down super, super hard on this, when I try to rotate around his leg, it's not going to work. Either I'm not going to move or he's going to flop over. And a good guy like Chad is not just going to flop over on me. So at that point, I need to go hard pressure, release, turn, hard pressure. So I can vary up the pressure that I'm giving on his leg at any given time to maximize whatever it is that I'm gonna to try to do. The other concept that I wanna talk about in terms of getting, keeping, and retaining uh, the lockdown is how important each of your feet are and what specific job each one of those feet need to do in order to be able to give you the best ability to maintain half guard and keep it locked in. One of the things that people think a lot of times is that this foot that is on the inside, the leg that is in between his, that's the one that's the most important for maintaining half guard. In lockdown, it's actually the opposite. It's my other leg, the outside leg. This is the one that makes the lockdown happen much more so than the other leg. I'll show you why. I get in here on Chad and I get this leg around. Let's say I'm not in lockdown yet, okay? And Ch Chad is trying to chair sit and keep this leg pulled back in so that I can't fish underneath of his toes. You'll notice that I still have my outside foot in, in his knee pit. Okay? As long as I keep that there, there's no real good way for Chad right now to chair sit underneath of that. Okay? He's going to have to figure out some way to get that foot up off the ground to be able to get his foot tucked back inside under my leg. As long as I keep this here, I always have the option of getting this foot extended out and then pulling this to the side. See how much space I just created there? Now, from doing that, I can come back and fish in and get my lock down. Obviously, I would be under him, not out to the side. But now I have the ability to get that. No matter what he is doing, no matter what he's trying to do to escape this position, as long as this foot stays on the inside, I have the ability to get back to lockdown at almost any time. Okay? That's the important thing that I have to do with this, is that stays there and I don't let it go anywhere. He might get his foot free, he might fight out, but as long as I can keep that in the pit of his knee, I'm always having the ability to go back to lockdown. 
The last important concept for control and getting back into lockdown is what I do with my inside leg. The goal of my inside leg is this is basically a fishing rod and what it's fishing for is that ankle at all times. So I talked to you guys about the escape Chad can do where he does the hamstring curl and then he kicks his foot out. Now what Chad is ultimately going to want to do, and we're going to show this in a lot more detail in a later video, is he wants to get that foot up by my butt. And the more he can get that up by my butt, the more, the more he's going to cut down my ability to do the lockdown. As long as that foot is out and extended away from his butt, I always have the ability to take this trapped foot and put it back underneath and bring it back inside. If you have really dexterous legs, especially like me, my legs have a lot of dexterity and they're short, this can be maddening for people on top of you who fight like crazy, finally get that foot free from that lockdown, the hamstring curl, they kick it out. Yes, I finally got, son of a bitch. And now they're back in, right back into lockdown. He kicks it out again, right back down. So I'm just constantly fishing with this foot to try to find that ankle and pull it in and pull it down. You can do that over and over and over again. Obviously his counter is get it to the butt and then it's just, it's too far up. I can't get it. I'm gonna have to go somewhere else. But as long as I've got my outside leg kicked around his knee, putting on pressure, and then I'm constantly fishing with whatever my inside foot is, trying to find that ankle and go underneath it. Lockdown is always there. And then I just extend his knee out break his posture, I get my clinch game going, and then we're all ready to rock and roll for some lockdown. So if you don't use lockdown right now, there's a drill as well as some concepts that should help you start to get there, start to understand better about what the position is so you can start using it. Next video, we're gonna start talking about some ways to do entries from different positions, how I make the transition to move my legs around to get myself into lockdown either from some inferior guard positions or maybe some that they're not necessarily an inferior guard position it's just basically meant for different things and i've decided i want to transition into lockdown so pay attention we'll drop that video next time if you like the video make sure that you hit the like button it really helps me out a lot subscribe to the channel turn on notifications and you'll get a notification every time we upload a new video and we'll see you guys in the next one thanks